Okay, so Junior Roberts here. We're on to another CSEC physics pass paper question. This question is related to radioactivity. So let's go right into it. So it says here that some great scientists contributed to the modern day view of the model of the atom. Two of these scientists were J.J. Thompson and Ernest Rutherford. Now it says here, for each of these scientists, describe briefly two main ideas they put forward concerning the nature of the atom, including the name of each of their models. So, if we first consider J.J. Thompson, which is Joseph John Thompson, so J.J. Thompson, right, he proposed the plum pudding model of the atom, so plum pudding model, right, and in the plum pudding model, right, he basically suggested that the atom consisted of what he considered a, a soup, right, of positive charges, charge with negative charges floating around in it, right? So his plum pudding model, right, consists of a soup of positive charges with negative charges floating around it, right? And he also suggested that uh, the negative, negative and positive charges, charges were equal, right, were equal, and this resulted in the atom being neutral, right, so the atom was neutral in charge, right, so that was the plum pudding model, plum pudding model by J.J. Thompson, Right, our next scientist is Ernest Rutherford. So Ernest Rutherford. Right, and Rutherford actually proposed the uh, planetary model. Planetary model of the atom. Right, and two of the things that Rutherford uh, proposed was that the atom, most of the atom, Right, so we could say most of the atom is empty space, right? And also, he would have suggested that uh, the atom consisted, so we could say the atom consists of a central positive nucleus, 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 right, with negative charges, charges floating in an electron cloud, electron cloud, in electron cloud, right? So just like how we have our solar system, right, with the sun in the middle, right, and then around the sun, we have the planets, right? So that's similar to what Rutherford uh, proposed the atom to be, right? It has a central positive nucleus, right, with our electrons floating around on, or floating around in these electron clouds. So these are the two models of the atom, right, and the different ideas proposed by these scientists. So let's continue. So it says here, in final revision for your CSEC physics examination, your teacher gave you the following data on some unknown elements, P, Q, R, X, and Y, right? And it says there that you are required to determine, number one, which nuclear nucleides have the same identical mass number. Now we can represent a nuclide by 
the format or by the notation x right in which x is our element right and a is our mass number right and z is what is referred to as our proton or uh, atomic number so a is our mass number right and z is our proton right or atomic number right so therefore our mass number is always at the top and our proton or atomic number is always at the bottom now in this case it says we are to determine which nuclides have the identical mass number right so we're going to look at the numbers at the top and see which are the similar or which are the same so in our example here p and q both have a mass number of 40 so therefore we could say that elements p and q right are the nuclides p and q have identical mass number sorry p and r right so p and r would have identical mass number now our next question says now how many neutrons are in the heaviest nuclide so two things we need to do we need to determine which of these nuclide is the heaviest right and then we need to determine how many neutrons is in that nuclide now we can determine the heaviest nuclide by looking at the mass number of these different nuclides so the nuclide which is the heaviest will have the largest mass number and we're seeing that nuclide x as the largest mass number of 238 right so we could say that the mass number a of x is 238 right now we can use this information knowing the mass number and the proton number to determine the number of neutrons and the expression that we can use is which we say that a is equal to z plus n in which a is our mass number z is our proton number and n is our number of neutrons so when we rearrange this equation we're going to get that n which is the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the proton number all right so in our case the mass number is 238 right and our proton number in this case is 92 so if we take our calculator right and we say 238 minus 92 we get that number of neutrons is 146 so we will say that uh, n number of neutrons is equal to 146 right so the number of neutrons is 146 now in our next question it says now which nuclides are isotopes now the thing we know about isotopes is that an isotope or isotopes are different forms of the same element having the same atomic number but different mass number right so we need to actually find nucleides that have the same atomic number right but different mass number right and we're seeing that y has an atomic number of 19 and p also have an atomic number of 19 but they have different mass numbers so therefore the elements that are isotopes are the nuclides that are isotopes are p and y right so p and y are isotopes which are different forms of the same element having the same atomic number but different mass number so let's continue so here it says now in a half-life experiment the data shown in table one were recorded now it says now to use the data to determine two different values for the half-life of the element right so let's take part one of the question right so we're given this table right in which we're given the count rate in minute at an, an initial time in which time is zero then we're given a count rate when time a count rate right uh, when time is now 55 seconds and so on and so forth now they want us to determine two different values for the half-life of the element now the half-life of an element is the time taken for half the mass or half the count rate to reduce all right so what we're saying is that if we have uh, an, initial, an initial count rate of 4,000 counts per minute, 
right after the first half life right so after the first half life right we're going to have a count rate of 2000 right and then after the second half life right we're going to have a count rate of 1000 and then after the third half life we're going to have a count rate of 500 right so therefore in this example right here this material would have gone through three half lives right so it would have gone through three half lives now if we consider our table right we would realize that it take it had taken two half lives to go from 4000 to 1000 right because after our first half life it's going to go down to 2000 then after the second half life it's going to go down to 1000 right so therefore it would have undergone two half lives so we can use this time here to determine the half life right so it would have taken two half lives to go from zero to 55 seconds so what we can simply do is to divide this time by two right so if we get our calculator and we say 55 divided by two right we're going to get a half life of 27.5 so we could say that our half life right our first half life is uh 27.5 seconds right that's our first half life now to determine our second half life we can look at the time it takes to go from 1000 a count rate of 1000 to 500 right so at a count rate of 5 at a count rate of 1000 the time was 55 seconds right while at a count rate of 500 the time was 80 seconds so what we will do is we will subtract this time from our initial time so we'll take our calculator and we will say 80 minus 55 right and we get an answer of 25 right so therefore our second half life in this case right t half half life is 25 seconds so these are the two values uh, for half life now in this case it says you now we are to determine the average half life for the element so to do that right we will just simply say that t half avg right is given by this half life plus this half life so we're gonna have 27.5 seconds plus 25 seconds and since we're dealing with the average and we have two quantities we're gonna divide here by two so taking our calculator right we will simply say 25 plus 27.5 equal divide by 2 and we get 26.25 seconds right and that will be our final answer so again this was junior roberts with real juniorroberts.com if there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on then post it below in comments and i'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you like this video if it was helpful and click subscribe on the bell notification so you'll be updated whenever i post new videos like this thank you for watching